Hello everyone, welcome back to another Belter video. Today, I've got a doozy for you. Have you ever wondered and thought, I feel a bit slow today. I feel like my bike is holding me back. It's slowing me down. Well, do you know what it actually could well be? So today we're gonna to identify a few problems with the wear. Your bike may well actually be causing you to go slower. What? A classic and a really obvious one that could genuinely be slowing your bike down is your brakes rubbing. Now, disc brakes, like a lot of us use these days, well, they can have a couple of problems go wrong with them. So the caliper could be out of alignment, causing the pads to constantly be wearing and rubbing against the disc as it goes round, causing obviously friction and resistance or vice versa. You had a, might have had a bit of a crash or a rock ping and hit the disc here and that disc could be bent. So the disc is going from left to right rubbing on the pads, but fear not, these are both easily fixable things. First up then, we've got to diagnose the problem. Are our brakes actually rubbing? Well, this is pretty easy to find out. You don't need a bike stand, but luckily there is one here at the bike park, but just pick each wheel up off the ground whilst it's still in the bike and just, you can just give it a spin. And then looking down through the top of the caliper, you can see if the disc is moving left to right or not. You can see sometimes at the back, but it's a bit trickier where you can see clearly down at the pads, well, then you can see the disc moving if it is. Um, and on a slightly quieter day than today's rainy, rainy day, once you're giving it a good spin as well, you'll sometimes hear if it's, you know, if it's squeaking or not. Obviously, if it is making a bit of a squeaky noise, then it is rubbing. How to fix the problem then? Well, stop that one from spinning at the moment. These two bolts here, which obviously hold the caliper on, you want to ever so slightly loosen and then move the caliper so that you've got daylight between either side of the pads. That's if the pads or the caliper is out of alignment. If you've got a bent rotor, well, you can get a special tool, like a, a, a rotor truing tool, uh, if you like, and that's gonna really carefully ply it the opposite way to what it's bent. What the? I've just dropped in, why am I not going faster? What the hell's going on here? Resistance is futile. Yes, especially the resistance in poorly working hubs, unfortunately. They are guaranteed to slow you down because over time, hubs take an absolute pasting from the elements, maybe from lack of maintenance, I dare not say, unfortunately, sometimes, uh, and just wear and tear. That you just think of that thing constantly, constantly spinning. Hubs do just wear out, or the bearings in hubs especially do just wear out. But it's not the be all and end all because it can be fixed, it can be rectified, and it can make you faster. Spotting the problem of poorly working hubs then is fairly simple and straightforward and actually very similar to how you would have spot if your brakes are rubbing. Yep, by just elevating either wheel or both at the same time, if you've got a work stand off the ground and giving them a good spin, you can soon find out if that wheel is spinning freely. Now, when you do this, make sure obviously that the brake isn't rubbing. Uh, so if you want, you could actually just whip the caliper off. Uh, or if you drop the wheel out of the bike and just hold it in your hands, you can give it a spin and normally you can either feel sort of a graunchy, notchy kind of feeling. And what that is, is the little ball bearings inside are really just grinding away and there's a complete lack of grease. If that is the case then, and sadly your hubs are grease less, then it may be time to think about replacing the bearings if they aren't serviceable. Uh, if you take it to a local bike shop or maybe you can try yourself, but be very careful, you could potentially pop out the old bearings and press new ones in, giving those hubs a silky smooth feel. If you can service your hubs, even better, it saves you a few quid and it means you can be completely self-reliant, which is always a nice thing. Uh, on some kind of sealed bearings, you can often pop the rubber weather seal off uh, and you'll be able to see pretty quickly inside what the condition is like. If it's looking grimy, pack it full of the uh, correct grease pop that seal back on and you'll be good to go. On some really old hubs, you may actually just have loose ball bearings floating around in there. Uh, if that's the case, obviously take them out, clean it up, remove all the old grease, debris, crap, and everything that's in there, pack it full of new grease and assemble it back together as well. Hopefully then after those top little tips, you'll be able to get those hubs running nice and smooth again and get that bike back up to speed so you'll be hauling ass down the trail. Ah, too soft, too soft. Two softer tires are gonna slow you down massively. Yes, all right, you might have an absolute ton of grip, but if you let them go down to lower pressures, they are gonna become a squirmy, wibbly, wobbly, unsafe, absolute mess. Yeesh. 
Yep, even lately, with the increase in technology for tyres, casing, sidewalls, rim width, inserts and tubeless technology, average tyre pressures, I suppose in a way, have been creeping down since the days of the inner tubes. But there is a fine line. Go too low on the tyre pressures mine and you run the risk of one, a massive amount of rolling resistance, but also damaging a wheel or potentially getting punctures even. Yikes, that is dangerous. It isn't all doom and gloom though, because there is a case where less is more. So if you are a downhill rider or an enduro rider, sometimes you might actually run a lower pressure to give you that optimum grip. So that tire is conforming to the ground and really giving you as much traction as possible. And because you're going downhill, well then rolling resistance might not be such a thing you're worried about. If you're an XC racer though, and you are running mega soft tire pressures, well, think of it this way. If you've got skinny XC tires, a lot of riding to do and a lot of climbing to do, well, that added resistance is gonna slow you down so much over a long period of time that actually a firmer pressure is far more worth it and a far safer bet. While this one might not make your bike slower as such, it will make your average speed on your ride slower and it is your suspension. Yep, having a good suspension setup can be absolutely crucial to just how fast you're going to be able to ride on your trusty bike. So then, having a really good suspension setup is going to make you faster, fact. But how do you have a really good suspension setup to improve that overall speed so that your bike isn't slowing you down, essentially? Well, think of things like the tracking, so the small bump sensitivity of both the front and rear shocks. How well that suspension is sort of working and really supple and tracking the ground. If you run it really firm and rock hard, well, then you're gonna be bouncing and pinging off bumps left, right, and center. And therefore, it's gonna be a really uncomfortable and unpredictable ride slowing you down. I know you might see those top end pros running really firm suspension and bouncing over the top of the rocks and the roots and all the other braking bumps out there, but you gotta think those guys are seasoned pros and the forces and speeds that they're putting through their suspension is a lot greater than, well, dare I say, most the average Joe public will be, which is why they run their suspension so firm. So really think about that suppleness at the beginning. Once you've got that kind of dialed in, think about your compression and rebound settings as well, as these will also really make a big difference to your ride. There are some general rules of thumb when it comes to suspension setup. So when we're talking about rebound, you don't want that thing set up really fast so that it's pogoing back really quick. So when you hit a, hit a compression, it rebounds in a nice controlled manner. If it compresses and then pings back, it actually exacerbates just how bad that bump feels. So try and find what works for you, a nice controlled rebound so that it comes back quick enough to then absorb the next bump, but not so quick that it's, it's almost topping out and actually making the ride uncomfortable. When it comes to compression, well, this obviously depends upon a rider feel and a rider weight sometimes as well, because you don't want to be bottoming out your fork all the time. If that's happening, it is definitely too soft. And now with the addition of tokens, you can really fine tune your compression as well. So think about how much compression's wound on with the actual sort of adjustments you have on a lot of modern day suspension and the amount of tokens in there. What a token is gonna do is sort of reduce that air volume in either the shock or the fork so that it ramps up towards the end of the stroke. And when I say ramps up, it gets firmer. And that is definitely something that you wanna kind of have a little bit of a play with. Suspension done then. So a few things to think about there with regards to just how you have it set up to make your bike faster and hopefully make you faster down the trails as well. But what have we got next? Oh my God, this shouldn't be so tough. It's not, it's not even a big hill. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I think more lube might be needed. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Oh, crikey. There is nothing more draggy and more draining, especially when going uphill, than a poorly maintained drivetrain. Yes, it is really gonna slow you down. If your drivetrain is all grindy, gritty, not lubed correctly or old and worn out, it can be a huge drain on your energy and on your bike because it doesn't go round as well. Ugh. Yep, sadly, a worn out drivetrain or a poorly maintained drivetrain does actually have an awful lot of resistance in it. 
because it just takes more effort and it slows the bike down. So it takes more effort to actually get it going. You know, think of all those different links in the chain. If each one of those has got resistance in it because it's not been lubed or maintained, well, then that slows down over a long period of time. Yep, try to keep on top of it if you can. So easy things to check are, are the teeth on your cassette or chaining really worn? If they start to look like shark's teeth or big old pyramids like this, well then, yeah, it's probably time to replace them. The same with the chain. If you can see the chain is visibly worn, so a bit rusty or tarnished and, and really going off like that, then you know it's probably time to swap that thing out as well. Likewise, you can actually get a chain checker and put that on and it will show you the amount of stretch in it. So if it's really stretched, I think it's anything above 0.5 then it's time to replace it. When it comes to a post-ride wash, yep, make sure your drivetrain is clean, degreased and ready to go. That way you can then go over it and make sure it's oiled up, running really smoothly, get some oil on there and run the, run the cranks backwards so it works into all the links nice and thoroughly. And you should actually just be able to feel then that there's almost no resistance in the drivetrain whatsoever and you will be again flying. There we have it then, a few things that might be making your bike slower without you even realizing that hopefully if you get on top of, you will be flying down the tracks next time you go for a spin. But for me, for now, in this very whew, rainy woodlands, I am out of here. I'm gonna go dry out, warm up, and have a cup of tea. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video, but I'll catch you later. Happy riding, everyone. See ya.